his office upstairs and I was following him and he muttered something and I didn't hear properly and I said yes and he turned back and he said what did I say I said sorry I didn't hear you properly he said why did you say yes then so he just uh, showed me the door there and then <laughs> so I went back again second time and he was more recipient and he spent a lot of time with me and I got the job in the post office so I became a postman and learned about all the post office routine and then uh, learned to drive and became a driver so worked about two years in the post office so what was the jump that uh, took you from being a, a postie to being a man who owns most of Belfast? Well, I wasn't uh, going to stay the postman. I wasn't happy there. I had uh, bigger ambitions. So my wife and I, we came for holidays to Ireland. We knew some friends from back home. We came to Dublin first and then came to Northern Ireland to visit some, some of my friends here. And things uh, were looking up quite well in Northern Ireland in 66. Uh, houses were cheaper. You could buy a house for nearly thousand pounds, a brand new Bangalore. You could buy your business for cheaper compared to England. And they, because I knew some people here, uh, in Northern Ireland, most of the Indians were all in business. So it encouraged me and gave me sort of opening to come to Northern Ireland and start uh, business here. When I told my friends in England that uh, my wife and I were moving to Northern Ireland, they were uh, amazed and they were saying, look, you're taking a chance, you're giving up your job, your wife has a nice job, you're selling your house, you're going to a strange place, uh, aren't you sort of uh, taking a big jump? But in my mind, I don't have any sense of fear. I was looking for a new challenge. And this is where I arrived in uh, September 66, very determined to make a go here. And that's, that's what we did. When I came here, I looked around what sort of business I could do. Eventually, I bought a small cafe for 1,400 pounds, downtown Belfast, and started working there. No, it was very, very tough business. We bought the place. It was a very mediocre place. It wasn't making much profit. So we refurbished, bought some new equipment, done it up. But it wasn't uh, doing the turnover that we wanted to. So we started opening late at night. There was a public bar next door. And we thought if we open up to 10, 11 o'clock, people will come from the bar when the bars close. So we started opening late and uh, we sat there many evening and nearly 10 nights and nobody came in. So it was quite disheartening experience whether to stay open or not, but I'm glad in the end some people started coming and it became popular. It became so popular then that on weekends, Friday and Saturday, we were open right up to 3 a.m. and people queued up at night after, because there was no other place in Belfast which would serve you a full meal after 10 o'clock at night. So it was pretty tough, you know, working up to 3 a.m., starting at 7 a.m. next morning again. And sometimes you just went home. By the time you reach home, it was about 4 o'clock. So just have shower and shave and have breakfast and come back again. So it was tough life indeed. Within three years, I had three major restaurants in Belfast. Times were, when I came here, times were quite peaceful. In 66, 67, there was no violence. Violence gradually started from 68 onwards. Unfortunately, by the end of 71, I lost all the restaurants. Two restaurants were bombed and destroyed within four weeks of each other. In November 1971 uh, and December 71. So it was a very hard time for me at that time, having progressed very well, having very successful catering business in Belfast, and then with no fault of mine, because of the circumstances prevailing in this society, I was out of business. I was left with a young family, mortgage, and all the other commitments without any income. So it was quite a heartbreak. But anyhow, I had to pick up the pieces again and started again with a very modest sum, a small boutique in downtown Belfast, what is called Queen's Arcade. 
Life was very difficult in Belfast uh, downtown, see, in the 70s when we had the boutiques here. Because we were right in the city center and there were all these m multiples, you know, Burtons and Marks and Spencers and C and A's. So that was the prime target for the terrorists, either with real incidents or with hoax calls. So there used to be hoax calls nearly every day, sometime more than once a day. So it was quite funny at times, you know, say a lady comes and she's trying a dress, in the middle of her trying dress, the scares is announced and the police says, get out, get out, get out, there's a bomb there. So there's no time for her to change and then she comes out and my staff comes out and she has left her old clothing in our boutique and she's wearing your dress and they're waiting for the bomb uh, sort of scare to clear. So you can't get her, let her go because she's wearing your dress <laughs> and the poor woman. So it was quite interesting, very hard, but also if you look at the humorous side, a very humorous situation.